This is basically a talk about how to magician. And uh, we're going to describe uh, the, the ideas behind it, and then maybe a little bit about the history and philosophy of it. Um, so this is something that's been on my mind lately, and it's not exactly relevant to um, this topic, but I think, I think it's, it's in the theme, and this is something we need to think about. Um, when we say governance, what are we governing? Often we're governing a resource. Um, it could be a technical resource, it could be financial, um, it could be something uh, that, that, that a community needs to come together and work on and, and, and uh, allocate. And it's a necessary evil. Um, and those resources need to be directed. And the thing is, when you're involved with resources, it's almost like heat or something. It's like an off, it, it exudes power. It, it just, it's nearby, it accumulates. And, and the thing is, power attracts certain personalities, it attracts more power, it, it agglomerates. And, and this is a truism, and actually I really think it's true, and I think a lot of people would agree with me, is that power ultimately corrupts you. And it is very difficult to be some, and as part of an organization or an individual who's looking after resources that offset or give off power and not be messed up about that. Um, because we all have goals, and power is, it's, it's alluring that we can see, we can do what we want to do. And, and that, that drives people crazy. So um, I wanted to go through a bunch of different slides about how people manage, manage this. And sometimes they'll define um, laws. They'll use laws to try to constrain people. Um, uh, and uh, the, in, in our case, we've we try to decentralize so we don't have capture, because when you have laws, you have potential capture. Um, it's inflexible. So you decentralize. The problem with decentralization and this whole notion, it's very vague. But the, really, the problem is it's, it's difficult to organize people in a decentralized scenario. It's hard to operate. Um, and so this is something that um, the magicians has been um, developing, this idea of self-organization. Um, and the key to, to organizing is that um, it's, I think it's very expensive. It's very difficult to train people on. And I think it takes a lot of uh, brain power and effort to coordinate people. Um, yeah. And one key thing about it is a require. Oh, sorry. Go. I, I was going to say another piece yeah. of this, in fact, is a challenge. Uh, when you say requires taking responsibility, uh, a lot of people say, I would like to help. Tell me what to do. So what you're doing is you're then reflecting and you are, in fact, accumulating power in a person, and you're putting responsibility on another person who has to do work to think about a problem to tell you what to do, never mind about power dynamics or anything else. So all of these are, are, are loops that are hard to get out of because we're naturally wired for some of these things. Yeah. Um, on both sides, a recognition that that is even happening. Uh, if, if you find yourself saying, tell me what to do, think first what you would assign yourself to do, even exposing things that you think should get done is a useful thing, even if you aren't going to do it. However, um, one of the things that Kevin Owaki said in the uh, Council of Prague is his new favorite phrase is rather than saying the phrase, we should do this, is saying, I am doing, uh, as something to think about uh, on this topic. Yeah, and that's critical. Um, and, that, and that takes, because many of us may, may have been used to either not having any authority govern over us at all, we're in totally total indie, or we've worked in corporations, we expect that structure. And so those contrasts make it difficult for people to perhaps learn how to socially coordinate, which is a very expensive activity. And essentially the magicians formed, and, and early when, when Greg and I were discussing it, and, and Greg, I'd have to say you were the, I see you as a very much a primary driver on it, but Greg has a lot of experience organizing um, in a political sense. Disorganizing. And, and dis, well, it's disorganizing. I will dare to call it organizing. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it, I, yeah, that's, and I would like you to speak to that a bit about um, wh where that, what that's about and how that can be used in, in technology and any issue, really. Yeah, I would call it, and it's generally called a non-organization rather than a disorganization, because disorganization 
um, you know, applies, uh, what is it, Boltzmann law? You know, it's, it's the image of a whole bunch of atoms just bouncing around off of each other. A non-organization can still be organized. Um, part of the motivation for a non-organization, which includes the IETF, which I'm su became surprised to know that many, many people didn't know what it was. So it's, Internet Engineering the, Task Force is yeah, what that stands for. And they are the people who... Um, defined initially the uh, TCP IP protocol without which we wouldn't be here and continue to maintain various standards um, and they are a non-organization. Uh, one of the reasons they are a non-organization is so that there is nobody to sue. <laughs> And uh, it, in this world, that's important. Um, there are, there's no list of members. There are no um, voting on anything. Um, things work by rough consensus and running code, is their saying. And that can go wrong in many, many ways, just as anything else can go wrong. Um, my personal experiences with it uh, started with participating in uh, in uh, civil disobedience against an atom bomb factory near my hometown. Um, and in organizing for those, simply voting on what we were going to do uh, wasn't going to make it because we were going to be purposely breaking the law and going up against uh, heavily armed people whose job it was to prevent us from doing that. So we needed to have a pretty high level of agreement as to what we were going to do. Are we just going to sit down on the road? Are we going to attempt to climb over the fence? Uh, are we actually going to assault the policeman? Uh, <laughs> uh, if the policemen assault us, what are we going to do about it? And watching that process of enough organization to pull it off, um, but not so much organization that anybody became, uh, you know, a leader who could be, you know, the day after the revolution, they became a conservative. And, you know, nobody completely succeeds at that because there will always be certain people um, Currently, Boris um, does a great job of facilitating meetings and getting things organized. And if he hadn't shown up, um, the magicians wouldn't be what they are because he's just good at getting up in the room and saying, OK, it's time to do this. Um, and at the recent meeting, I was calling him my keeper because I just. Chief of I, staff. I, no, he was my keeper. <laughs> I, I could not keep track of where did I need to be when? What's happening in this in this big big old building over there? Like where where the hell is the room that I'm supposed to be in right now? Um, and Boris would be, oh, you need to be up there, and don't worry, just take the staircase and, and right, and there's there's a bathroom on the left. Um, so I'm going too far on that. Um, <laughs> I don't know where the bathrooms in this building are. Yeah, it was a mystery sometimes. Um, <laughs> but, but, but the motivations were, were, were pretty personal at first. I'd done um, months of work on a proposal that um, somehow got canceled. I didn't really know why it had been canceled, but you know, my con you know, my contract with the foundation we couldn't agree on, and I moved on. And I'm thinking, uh, if I want to do a whole lot of work and then have my project canceled by a middle manager for no apparent reason, I should go back to corporations and get paid a hell of a lot of money for that. Um. <laughs> so so I, th I think one of the things that... Um, I learned about the magicians was that uh, it, it, I was really impressed by Aya's presentation this morning talking about the galaxy and the universe. Not once did she claim the Ethereum Foundation of being Ethereum, but being part of the galaxy. Um, and Hudson's list, ordered by length of name, 
I love it. Uh, it's not alphabetical, it's just length of letters. Um, and so that is sort of a signaling me mechanism that there are some entities that are appearing, twinkling in the universe. And I think part of the ETH magicians, what I'm seeing, um, the non-organization is still emerging in what uh, its joint goals are or individual subgroups or other things like that. But definitely some of the principles are things like transparency. So whenever we see decisions of the ecosystem being made in closed forums, we point it out. When we say, how, do we, how, do, how does this decision get made? Right? We're not attacking, we're asking a question. We're not saying, why were we not consulted? Which is the classic internet thing. Oh, yes I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if we, we're saying, okay, how does this work? How do people get involved? What is the open model for this? if we believe, so we're, we're a force, I believe, and again, I can't speak for it. This is my particular point of view of the elephant uh, that I see, and as other people grow, come in, uh, it itself will evolve of what the shared culture goals and values are. The other thing I was observing was everything seemed to be happening on things like Jitter channels, Reddit, um, there were no open forums where people came together to work, not to sit as currently we are. You're sitting down and we're talking at you. And I knew by the time I finished graduate school, I, I can hardly stand that anymore. Uh, I, to sit in the chair and have people talk at me, I just want to run. And I knew from years of work on the ANSI C++ committee, just the power of doing that, that the people that online appeared to be, you know, hostile assholes, uh, people who appeared to hate each other, yeah. when you actually put them in a room to work yeah. together, things get much more civilized. Yeah. That's where you, you build the trust in one another. And that's a key component of this, because you can organize online, but you need to have these in-person meetings, like what we're about to do here, essentially. Um, and so, um, I guess I'll, I'll start to close it, um, but in terms of how, how to self-organize, I think a key piece of it is declare your goals, like find your goals, find your principles as a small group. You know, if you think you know, like you're reaching out, you see, you see a problem domain, you want to you take it on, you have some, somebody you want to work with, find, find your principles together, find your values together, and that process could be difficult because you might find your differences. But the key is to set them down before you start creating your operation. Um, that will guide you. That, that is a mistake I think a lot of organizations make or non-organizations make, is they have a goal, they wanna do this goal, they're really interested in this goal, they, they're, they're on the same page about the goal, but they haven't defined their principles. So they don't have anything to fall back on when they reach a potential conflict. And so, early on in the magicians, and this is something Greg really helped with, and he took it from the IETF, was to define these principles, openness, um, in, uh, is it in-person meeting? No, that's not, is that a principle? No, that's a practice. Um, we don't need to get that deep into it. Yeah, we're not gonna dig into it, but we have these set of principles that we follow, and it's every time we, we come into decision, we th it's, in, it's in the back of our minds, and I think that's a really big piece of it. And I think there's a lot of organizations in the community that have not declared that and committed themselves to that. Uh, have re maybe have not reached consensus on that, so when they have a, a difficulty in their operation, they, were, they might resort to, to rules, or they might resort to authority, right? So I think that's, the, that's a lesson I'd like to convey. And if you, if you guys have any lessons to convey, or anyone out here has a lesson to convey, um, other than that, I'll close it. Do you wanna... Yeah, just I think that's exactly some of the closing things that, that, that Sarah pointed out, basically uh, being vigilant about looking out for centralizing forces uh, and fighting back against that using different techniques, mm -hmm. using principles to lie against it, right? And always try and self-check yourself with that. Partly that was possible um, because we're a community, but we're not like a nation where you have a border and a whole bunch of people who simply have to get along one way or another. And so the magician started simply as an invitation. And I'm actually 
you know, just amazed that it worked out at all. Um, as far as I knew, the invitation would be, you know, you give a party and nobody shows up. <laughs> um, and for personal family reasons, shortly after it happened, I had almost no time to devote to it. And uh, people like Boris, uh, Danny, uh, other people just stood up and said, oh, we need to have a meeting in Paris. We'll, we'll take care of it. Yeah, someone, uh, who was it, stood up and said, oh, Web3 can do this. I don't know who. Uh, Ashley, yeah. Um, I wasn't much involved, so, but people just did it. And what I tend to say here is that in this sort of decentralized community, people just stand up to do a job that they think needs to be done, and the community either accepts that, yes, they're doing that job and we'll let them do it, or they say, no, <laughs> they're not doing that job and we're going to ignore them. So the core devs, the community could just say, we don't care what you say. Um, and sometimes you wind up with a hard fork. Um, the EIP editors, um, we, we, we just started doing it. And people are going, yeah, somebody needs to maintain a, a repository and establish some basic standards for what a document should look like and give them numbers and simple stuff like that. But the community could have just said, eh, we don't need that. Who are you guys? Uh, and how long, how long we can keep that up, whether it scales, I don't know. But I hope it scales for a fair way. I think that's a good segue. And one of our questions is social scalability. So that will be one of our things for our, our section of questions. Thank you. Great. So 